<laughs> I've been, you know, I've been contemplating uh, like different dimensional doors that you could travel through that would stop time here. But so time would keep moving with your consciousness as you travel out of your body through another dimensional door, right? But here, time has stopped. So it's almost like time is relevant. And, you know, but Dave and I are drummers, so we keep time anyway. So it doesn't matter. Time is irrelevant. We keep time. So you're basically your job is irrelevant. We are time, though. So if it's time, guess what? Call Shannon and Dave because it's time, motherfuckers. (laughs) Guys. Normally, we have like multiple sign ins, like, hey, you're listening to 2020, subscribe. That doesn't happen on this episode. That's because Shannon Larkin's fucking eyes, you can tell in real time, just like the Titanic sinking in the movie, his eyes are getting exponentially blacker because his pupils are dilated. And you can tell that the Cambodian shrooms are now interacting with the Costa Rican shrooms. And you can see David Abraziz from Pearl Jam looking into the netherworld and seeing the astral projection, wherever the fuck he is, of Shannon as they're both realizing how beautiful that place, wherever that place may be, is. Well, so in other words, the three of us got 2020 out of ending our first episode and starting our second episode because we had two amazing guests this week. Obviously, as Benny mentioned, he didn't introduce us, but Benny Goodman. I'm Siobhan Cronin, again with Corey Peza. You're listening to 2020. We have part two with David Abruziz and Shannon Larkin. Just some craziness in this episode. I don't even know how to describe it. The apocalypse and the black hole that is David Abruziz. <laughs> okay, hold on. So I have I have to ask an important question. So David, since we've spoken last, I noticed that Pearl Jam had a number one album with you on it again, uh, with Pearl Jam MTV Unplugged. Because I remember watching that. I, I don't was it ninety three or ninety two or what have you, uh, and it being the coolest thing that was on MTV at the time. And it came out during the COVIDs, and it yeah. went to number one. What's yeah, up with not- that, bro? I don't know, but it's it's kind of cool, you know, that they finally put out another successful record with a good drummer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what my favorite Pearl Jam record is? No. Your first one. Your first record with a Vitalogy. Oh, first Vitalogy was my second one with it. Still my, my, oh, that's Dave's second record. I mean, my, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I know. No, I didn't know. Uh, you like, say not- hello, <laughs> I say goodbye. Hello, <laughs> hello. Fucking uh, all those records though are all great, but that's my favorite one. All these yeah, years that Yeah, I, I think that that one. I mean, for me as a, as a drummer, that's that's my favorite one because it's it was the most. Um, it's raw. And yeah, rock, it rocks like a classic rock or something. It's just rocks. It's just it you beat the fucking. You're like a. You're like a fucking gorilla. Or it's, it's weird you have a bunch of number one records with them, but you're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's kind of strange to me. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I understand. Let's start it, <laughs> Shannon. What the fuck do you think about this? Because this, this is kind of how we got David amazing. to come out of hiding. Like, what do you think about that? He just had another number one with a band he hasn't been in for over twenty fucking years, and they still won't even give him his due. It's not right, but I mean, on the other hand, like you had to ask me that question. But it's okay. I wasn't on the, no, I wasn't on the first two Godsmack records. And you were like, what if they fucking, you know, put, put Godsmack in a, in a hall someday and I'm, and I'm not the one they pick. And you know what? I don't give a fuck because those fucking dudes are fucking a bunch of suit and ties that a committee sits around and puts fucking share in before kiss or whatever, you know, it's, it's a bullshit thing anyway. And, but, you know, and if you look at like the Ramones or whatever, you know, and they don't put Richie Ramone, they're picking to choose what, what, it should be up to the bands, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But I, Dave, I would have been like, it would have hurt. It would have hurt me. I know. I'll be honest. It would have hurt me. It would hurt my feelings like that. The band wouldn't stick up and say, look, we can have both the all fucking knuckleheads in whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? For, for the time and the records done and the, the, the time spent on the road and everything and just being a part of something that, 
culturally relevant. It would be it, it would hurt, it would hurt I, my feelings, you know. You know but I, it, it did hurt. Me. Hey, yeah. I, but I, you know, I also think, well, Jam's case. I mean, I personally think that their crew should have been in the Hall of Fame. You know, because if it wasn't for the crew, that band wouldn't have been shit. That crew, that the core crew that we had from when we hopped in the van together. I mean, you know, every night when I went on stage, it, my ritual was, you know, slap Eric on the back, our tour manager, go over and give our, our monitor engineer a kiss on the cheek, high five Scully, call him a dick, go over and, and you know, <laughs> flip George Webb off and then go back and hug Jimmy. And, you know, it was like, that was that, you know, if that didn't happen every night, then it didn't feel right, you know? Just one of those Did things. Did that happen was, the night that, that you gave Eddie 17 stitches? <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes you want to hit a crash well, symbol. Maybe it was the hug that you didn't give your friend. <laughs> like maybe it was the crew's fault because you didn't hug him, and they were like getting blown with Vinnie Paul in the back room. No, that that actually that was part of the thing with that crew. They were they worked as hard as we did. You know, no one there were no shenanigans. There was nothing that it was. You know, I mean, I remember when uh, when we were on Lollapalooza and hanging out with ministry and realizing how lucky we were. <laughs> the night that Al shot off a pyro uh, thing in the bus, down the bus hallway, into the front windshield. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was so lucky to be in a tame band. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That bus driver pulled, pulled, didn't say a word, got out, got his bags and started walking. <laughs> oh my God. So frightening. <laughs> It's just a 25 degree burst. What's the big deal? Yeah. Oh, man. I saw y'all, Dave, in uh, Lollapalooza, Pittsburgh. And, like, it was such a, a memorable moment because Pearl Jam was, I think, the second band on the stage. Yeah, and 30 minutes, man. But, but the Jeremy had fucking spoken by then. And, God damn, you know... <laughs> The motherfuckers were, I and and me and my at the time my fiance and my my best buddy, and his wife, and and one more couple, and we had driven from uh, Baltimore up to Pittsburgh to see the Alpluza, and so we get the great idea to take paper acid right before we walk in, you know, and so and so. Pearl Jam was pretty new, you know, but, but, but Jeremy had spoken where everybody knew it. And so fucking, we had like, we were underneath the, uh, it was one of those amphitheaters and we were underneath the, the, the top that we were, so we were covered and the lawn. And of course the whole thing was, it's probably sold out all for fucking Pearl Jam at that point. But no, you know, it, the promoters, no one knew this shit yet. So, or else they'd have moved y'all up to the fucking where you should have been by then. But anyway, so, as soon as y'all fucking the first note, the whole lawn just said, fuck it and jumped off, jumped the security guards going down. We're tripping balls, dude. Me and my fiance and I'm like, we're all, oh my God, it was the scariest thing. We were scared to death by you guys. I'm like those Pearl Jam guys, they're scary. Yeah, well, it, was so, it was so cool though, because from, from where I was sitting, all those people, that mass of humanity that would always rush up or, or rip the seats out and hand them up to us, all, they all had big smiles on their face. So it was yeah. cool. Yeah. It didn't look yeah. as violent as it must have felt being in the crowd. And, and there, was <laughs> one, there was a show in Dallas where we're we were playing. On acid. My folks were there, and I remember seeing them, and I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> as soon as we played, <laughs> like, you know, really, I was worried for my parents. And luckily, they had gotten plucked out and brought back to the soundboard. So oh, nice. <laughs> that was a show where they they actually the crowd had, had wrenched the seats out of the cement and handed them up row after row. So I think we had to pay for wow. 17 row seats. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best 30 minute a day job ever. <laughs> it must have really been something else, though, to be a part of, uh, you know, watching something touch just oh culture. yeah it like impact our whole culture you know and like watching it happen like in real time being part of this your well, that change. Was trip, though it's, you know when it was happening we were working so hard and i was working so hard um 
that we didn't see it. You know, I mean, I look back when I see things now and I look back and I read articles and, or when people write me, uh, you know, send, you know, out of the blue, I get these emails from people and it just blows my mind, you know, just, oh, it never fails to blow my mind. But at the time, you know, we were just, we were working so hard, you know, I mean, we were, we were a five day on one day off band for years, you know, we just worked, you know, we were, <laughs> I mean, you know, when we were out with the peppers, we were doing one-off shows too, because, you know, we were trying to make some money <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then yeah. like selling, you know, t-shirts left and right. So bought my house t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, man. Merch rules. Ask Ron from, from star set. He does no, the same thing as Kevin from Candlebox, doesn't he? He owns a merch company. And of course, how smart is it to do the merch for like one of the most ubiquitous bands out there, such as Starset? Siobhan, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's funny because, you know, coming from classical music, I had no understanding of what merch even was. So this was like a phenomenon to me when I got into no the No Beethoven tour shirts for you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, it's it, classical music. Everything's made on, on live performance and you're not even making money. It's all like buffered by sponsors. So it's so wow. interesting, like the how the business structure works in rock music is completely different. Oh, yeah, man. T-shirts and hats. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Um, Chikoff. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we need some Lost Symphony hats. Right. So, okay, I have to ask you guys because Shannon took some some you know ethereal esoteric tea earlier. Um, I want to ask you guys. Um, I know that we all you know uh, unite in our our view that going to the netherworld, as I call it, um, helps sort of um, defragment your emotions and. Um, can certainly help you get a better grip on things when you kind of come back to reality. Um, how do you guys feel about that? You know, Shannon and David, especially going live to Shannon. What do you feel about question? taking shrooms in your life? Do you feel like it actually helps you? Like, what is it? What does it do for you for people who don't understand the value? Um, right now I have real warm feeling in my stomach. And <laughs> My room is like a light with beautiful, vibrant color. Can, and, can you um, turn the camera so we can see your room a little bit? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. I just love this room. It's amazing. Oh, that's so vibey yeah. though. Oh my gosh. It's like a Morris Escher tessellation. <laughs> like which way are we walking on the Mobius strip, asshole? <laughs> This, is a very this reminds me, there, there's this venue in Milwaukee. I think it's called The Rave. I don't it's know Millie if you guys Waukee. have played there. It's no, but the, but the, for the no, but the dressing, I, I have like a vivid memory of this place and we've played there a few times, but like all the dressing rooms are super vibey like that. It's like this, this weird old place. There was like a secret underground pool that they like locked up, but like all the dressing rooms, it's like tapestries and lava lamps and like cool chairs. And it's like, it's completely unlike any other venue I've been to. So, oh, like Bill Graham in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, in, yeah, the, I think it's called the Rave, right? The backstage, the yeah, backstage the fucking, yeah. That's what I modeled this room on. Oh, okay. shut up! I was like, <laughs> shut okay. the fuck up! I was I like, this room God, reminds I, me exactly of the dressing room we had at the Rave, and I was like, it's so cool. I love that place. I love that you just called out the exact room. I thought it looked like Ernie Box yeah. back smash room, but like, no. <laughs> that it, thing, that place has been there forever. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's got three rooms. There's a little shit bar in the bottom and then the mid room and then the big fucking 2000. So I played all three of the rooms in different incarnations, you know? Oh, like nice. That. I think we've played two of the three rooms, but that that's the place that has like, I think there's a secret like swimming pool, right? There's like an old. And you can the, also, I, yeah. And you can go up on the roof and it's supposed to be that pool room is haunted or whatever. It's a cool Yeah, yeah, place. exactly. Yeah. But every time I played there, I was like, Look for. I would look forward to when I'd see it on the itinerary. I'd look forward to playing there to be in the dressing room, and get high. Totally, so, yeah. And fucking, I was <laughs> it's like, like our whole I, sound I, crew. <laughs> I'm like, if I can ever afford my own house someday, I'm gonna have a fucking hippie room that looks just like the. And that's what this room is. Except yeah. it's even better. I made it better than theirs. Yeah. I have because I have bongs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they just have like a little fridge and some lava lamps so i'm sure yours is way decked out yeah. no That's you know awesome. those huge lava lamps in their dressing rooms and the the big ones you know like a, right 
but I swear I got my idea from them. That's, That's pretty so cool. funny. That's I got the idea from my pants from watching your interview, your last interview. That's fucking fantastic, bro. Once again, you got to tune into the YouTube. On Who this needs drugs when you have friends like these, ladies and gentlemen? Exactly. <laughs> Your pants are literally like fear and loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't hurt the fact that you literally look like Hunter S. Thompson with your fucking cigarette. Like, we're uh we're twenty-five miles outside of Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I if do- we want to get darker, we can go some Bukowski, you know. Find what you love, David, and let it kill you. <laughs> That's a Damn thinker, it, guys. The two of you guys, you're, some, you're our favorite guests. You guys are awesome. You're, you know, both incredible drummers, like legendary careers. And uh, you're both super down to earth, super cool. And I get like the same kind of vibe. Shannon, on your last episode, you kind of talked about, you know, the, the atmosphere you create, not only in your room, but your yard. You know, you, you've created this whole. And we found out from account. Mikey Doling, his house is like black. Yeah. Like we didn't know so, that. Yeah. Mikey Dolan yeah. told us. We had to find out from Mikey. Hey, did you guys have fun with Mikey? Oh, we he love Mikey. Mikey. He was He's awesome. the fucking man. He's really cool. <laughs> so you kind of create this, this you, your environment for yourself that, that really fits your vibe. David, you're living in, a, in a, I think, an area that, that fits your vibe. Shannon, can you tell David about, yeah, look at that. Can you tell him about like your... Your yard, your your um, river in your yard, the, the you know the, the canal you've built, and uh, and then David, maybe David, David's you can gonna, share uh, like what's going on outside your place there. Yes. Oh shit! <laughs> How far are you from Mount Vesuvius? Vesuvius. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> He's got volcanoes in the background. I'm just saying. Oh, I don't know where it is. He could be on a different planet. I'm like, I remember. I just saw a movie. I had that in it. God damn it! All right. Volcano, Vesuvius, yes, Venus, uh, fly but, trip. But how important is your environment, especially now that you're? Because people don't understand that the environment, the music you listen to, is so paramount to how you feel with what you're doing, as far as emotionally and soul cleansing by taking the shroomy shrooms. <laughs> um, yeah, I know that. Uh, wow, his place is gorgeous. Look at that. I just you keep going. I, I'm, you're gonna love me. This is for you, Shannon. <laughs> you're taking all of us on a trip. You guys have to tune into YouTube and watch this because David, he's giving us a little bit more information about his undisclosed location, which we can't we can't talk about it. Oh my got- god! Yeah, don't get. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are not visually watching, we have a we have a duck floaty in a in a very very koi interesting pond. <laughs> koi pond that's very green in nature. <laughs> yeah, Lord. that's uh, <laughs> I thought that would that would be particularly interesting to you right now, Shannon. <laughs> that was particularly gorgeous, man. Wow, so lush, yeah. Wow. It's a little- it's a little bit foggy today, but it's a nice day out. <laughs> it's gorgeous, man. Wow. So, Did you plant stuff yourself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This place, man, this place was, uh, was falling down. <laughs> when I, when I, when I, before I fixed it, you could see the sky through the roof and the floor was dirt. Here. No. A- no really? Wow, dude. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it came out it came out pretty good. <laughs> it's gorgeous, man. Wow. I'm actually working in my yard now, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love it, man. Wow. Plant my own plant. And Ruby really- Cribs. <laughs> With David Abrazese. Oh, so let me... Let, let me ask you both a question. Who, if you each had to identify three of the most influential, and it doesn't have to be drummers, because I know we've talked about a lot about drummers, and obviously I don't know a lot about drummers, but you know, who would you consider the most influential figures or artists or ideas? Like anything that really like changed your perspective in on your craft or what you do or changed your life in some way. I'm just curious to hear. Wow. I mean, off the top of my head, David Bowie, 
Ali Crowley and Pete Townsend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, Interesting. Three artists, that, three artists that changed my fucking world, man, right there. Huh. You, David, checking the ball. <laughs> That's a damn fine question. Right now, the only the only thing that comes to mind is this guy. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to see here. Hold on. Everybody, man, you know, it, I always come back to the people that I've been lucky enough to, to create music with. You know, I mean, the, there were my influences and the people that shaped me, um, you know, the soundtrack of my youth. And then there's the daily basis people. And, <laughs> but, like when I, I went and worked with Roger Hodgson from Supertramp and I mean, the amount of growth as a player that I got from that experience um, mm -hmm. was, you know, it's Stevie Solace, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> I was just talking about it yesterday. We would get in, we'd be working and working and working and he'd be nitpicking everything. And finally I would just, you know, kick him out or make him go to the store and then I'd get the part and, you know, the next pass it's done. And, and I'd always ask, you know, why are you, why are you riling me up? And he, that's good for you, David. You know, <laughs> it's just like, well, you say um, super tramp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roger Hodgson. The, yeah. It was a man. I've been on a super tramp kick, man. They, they're like, <laughs> unknown, un, and everyone knows their songs, but you don't know what they look like. Super tramp. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like, wow, I had to, I had to go on YouTube just to see like, what do these guys look like? They have funny so much great when music. I, I were playing the Greek theater on Halloween in San Francisco or in Berkeley. And, um, our tour manager, Eric, you know, he was always giving me shit for listening to hippie music. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and he told me that Roger Hodgson from Supertramp was going to be at the show. And I was like, wow, you know, this would be amazing. And um, after the show, <laughs> I'm like you know, talking to this guy and, and his son, and um, and waiting, like, looking around. Like while we're talking, I'm looking for this guy from Super Trap. I have no idea what he's going to look like, but I figure he's going to be, you know, glowing or something. I don't know. And then about 25 minutes <laughs> yeah. Eric says, oh, good. So you've met Roger. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, it's this. Guy, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I love that glowing or something. I'm, I'm looking for a fucking lighter, man. <laughs> it's, it's don't pull, hey, listen, <laughs> Shannon, don't pull a Richard Pryor on me, okay? I don't need that shit on my time. Yeah, no, don't we, do it, dude. Don't. We, we, we love you, man. Up. Look, want to see my bed? Yes, <laughs> obviously. Look, Look, Hi. look above my we bed. Get that. Like, this is my bed. Oh my god! And he and he look up. Oh, oh, <laughs> venom! <laughs> oh, <Nice>. Venom toaster. <laughs> <laughs> that metal. This is that metal. That that's <laughs> mighty metal, man. That's fucking metal, isn't it? <laughs> fucking metal, isn't it? Oh man! I'll find a lighter and smoke pot. This is the most visual episode we've ever done. It's great. Oh, well, speaking, sure. of, speaking of visuals, Shannon, can you describe to the world, like, are we are we at, like, Alex Gray tool cover yet? Let me see if I can show you a <laughs> palm. Got to give Shannon a start. You can see my face. Go when he's so Dave, my pond. Dave, he's on a mission to the pond. No, he's not smoking. Hey, uh, on this this is well done, sir. Don't drop oh, the computer in the water. Oh, it's too damn dark. <laughs> <laughs> you need to like underlight your entire pond, all 55,000 gallons, so that when we want to look at it at night, Shannon, we can fucking see it. <laughs> Get with 30, it, bro. Yeah. That's <laughs> not pimp, bro. That's not pimp. That's cool, but it's not pimp. <laughs> <laughs> I bet all you right, Nuno Bentancourt has a 60,000 gallon pond with all fucking LED all lights right. under the whole thing. This one is an albino Red eared slider, ready? Oh, that's nice. Hey, look at this little guy. Can you what? see? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what are their names? Well, that one's Johnny. Johnny Winter. He's albino. You know. 
Um, that's Bowie. And this guy here, look at this guy. <laughs> He's standing up against the thing. These are uh, turtles for anyone that's listening. They're pretty amazing. <laughs> I fucking love this thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shannon, are you glad you came on this show? Yeah, dude. I'm having a great time. Are we having a good Should time? Because I feel like, listen, we're getting the full tour. This. Out with Dave again. This just, just trips me out, man. Like are you sure that's the only thing tripping you out? It's a positive fucking thing, man, right now happening. It's so rad. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my own world now. <laughs> Everyone notice he's wearing a 2020 shirt, which you can I know, get at two zero two. Oh, by the way, Shannon, the shirt that you're wearing, the artwork was drawn by our drummer Paul Lorenzo. He's a oh, man. Yeah. Wow. So he's fucking a demon on drums, and he can draw. Oh, dude, you should see, dude, you should see the trippy ass shit he fucking draws. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I have about 300 of these things around my house, man. But like, he is super that. talented. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's an example I, of like one of the crazy yeah, things. So, so Bond has ahead. pretty eyes. That's what I'm seeing now. You know what I mean? Like, he just draws these things <laughs> and they're all on the back of bank statements. So yeah. It's a fucking, for people who can't see it, it's a record player with like crying, holding a guitar that's limp. And it's like a person, and it's such like it. If you ask Paul, just like his drumming, you ask him if it means anything, he goes, "Absolutely not. I didn't think of anything. There's no subtext." But anyone that's read Sigmund Freud or any psychology whatsoever knows there's a lot of shit going on in this motherfucker's head. <laughs> his subconscious is a scary place to be, man. I don't know if I want to be tripping up there. <laughs> So we got we got turtles we got we got dogs uh, I think that uh, David rescued a dog we've covered so much we wait got but rock wait stories. how did David rescue the dog I don't I feel like we didn't we just saw we, this yeah, beautiful majestic that, oh, that might have been before we before we yeah started. so ladies and gentlemen David Abruzzese while we were talking beforehand it, what Shannon signed on then took the tea and he was gone and then David <laughs> signed on and then showed us this beautiful dog that he apparently just picked up. Because he saw it in the cage, <laughs> and now, and now he's gone. gone. <laughs> oh no! He got twenty twenty. I think he was trying to turn David. the camera around, and he shut it off. <laughs> there he oh. is. He's back. Oh, he's back. <laughs> David, what's up with the dog? Where did you get the dog? Uh, I was on my way back from dropping someone off at the airport, and um, I saw uh, there was a cage on the sidewalk with a Just white like dog. An abandoned and a cage. No, no, there was a, there was someone there selling puppies. Oh, okay. And pulled over and and the black dog was going nuts and the white dog was really cool. So I snagged the white dog and drew <laughs> eyebrows on it. Got it home. <laughs> you drew eyebrows <laughs> on it. You drew <laughs> eyebrows on it. Then brought it. Home. Uh, you got to do that in this lifetime. If you haven't drawn eyebrows on a dog, you have not lived. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you need to do that with Pino. How mad would your mom be? I've little... never once had that thought in my life about drawing <laughs> eye eyebrows on a dog. Where did that come from? And then it disappears again. <laughs> He's like, the by the way, ladies and idea? gentlemen, let me just drop this knowledge bomb on you. If you haven't drawn eyebrows on a dog, you but, haven't but is lived. This like, is this like another uh, mushroom thing, you know, where you have these revelations about things that you should be doing in your life? Like, is would I have learned that if I did the mushrooms? <laughs> Depends on the friends you have. <laughs> I've been, you know, I've been contemplating, uh, like different dimensional doors that you could travel through that would stop time here. But so time would keep moving with your consciousness as you travel out of your body through another dimensional door, right? But here, time is stopped. So it's almost like time is relevant. And, you know, but Dave and I are drummers, so we keep time anyway, so it doesn't matter. Time is irrelevant. We keep time. So you're basically your job is irrelevant. We are time, though. So yeah, we if it's time, guess what? Call Shannon and Dave because it's time, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Prince from the grave is like, no, I trademarked that. It's more his day in the times. Back <laughs> off, Larkin. <laughs> well, wait, what are what are these other dimensions? I want to hear about it. One is seven you, four. You, what? <laughs> seven one four. is five the other one's seven over four. It's three four. <laughs> six eight. <laughs> Got it. <laughs>
I want no, no, Shannon. So I agree with you. I feel I call it going to the netherworld because I feel like once I start seeing seeing my ceiling kind of start to shimmer and I can see through the ceiling into something else is when I feel like I, you know my mind starts going to places that it would not normally. So I understand what you're saying. Um, can you explain to people how you're feeling about that? As far as like if you go to another dimension, it does make sense. Are you? actually projecting yourself to somewhere else like do you believe that you're actually sending your consciousness to another place that is exactly it and like you know i haven't experienced it on dmt but i'm told that there's a different dimension that multiple people that don't know each other everybody sees the same things and how could that be unless there was an actual place that's obviously not a physical place it's a place we have to go in our mind or from our own and so I, but in all seriousness, I do believe that, you know, that, that there's dimensional doors that you can somehow pass through astrally. And well, so, I, and I do also believe that the tree of life is a map of the universe. And if you can astrally travel, then you can go to uh, destinations that you choose. Well, I mean, what's the fastest way to anywhere, Shannon? It's just by actually projecting yourself there. And the thing is, is that I've noticed when I, I, I have been in those moments and I feel like I can see through my ceiling. I, I, my great, one of the greatest fears is actually realizing that maybe you could be somewhere else and some, something else is seeing you and you're making an impression in another area that you've never been to using your mind. And people might think that this is a really abstract concept, but it's one of those things where I feel like a lot of the emotional purging and the dynamics of sometimes I feel sad or really happy um, are all meaningful when I'm going and looking into that other dimension. Can you speak to that as to how you're feeling? Um, <laughs> right now, right now, uh, I, I, I would feel foolish to try and put that in the words because my adult brain is thinking wondrous thoughts. <laughs> but do you think you could play the song 15 BPM faster right now if you went into the studio? I what? I said, do you think you could play the song 15 BPM faster right now if you had oh. to go back to the studio and Sully called you? No, he'd be like, start the song and I'd be, what's the riff again? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear David's thoughts. On yeah, this David, what do you think about this Tell real us, time? Because yeah. we told Shannon, like, hey, man, like, if you want, like, the, it was kind of a joke. Like, the order of operations would be like, sign on to the the internet connection, then take shrooms, and, and he did it actually. So I, I know that you've gone through uh, the depths of your mind, uh, hallucinogenically. Um, can you speak to how your see your impressions of Shannon now? How is he feeling? Well, no, the better David. Question. <laughs> the better question to David would be simply, do you believe in dimensional doors, you know, having, oh, done, yeah. 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 I, I still have a little bit of fear that one day I'm going to open my eyes and I'm going to be 17 laying in a field covered in fire ant bites. And this is all going to have been one big mushroom trip. I'm going to have to try to make all the same decisions <laughs> oh. that I made. Wow. In my life. <laughs> that's scary actually yeah but one thing different change it all i do Ooh, that's know, a i do know that red ant bites suck <laughs> <laughs> that's not a world i want to go back to david it sounds like inception like may like did you did you die in this world and like time slowed down for you because that's another thing that people don't realize is that when you're on that stuff like there is no time so like it may be two hours. Like I, I actually sent a uh, um, a cheap trick record to David, and David, I was high as a kite packing it up. And let me tell you, it took maybe two and a half hours, three. I, I don't know for sure to pack that, and it still came smashed to you, which makes me question my entire existence. Is this a metaphor for something? <laughs> You just can't have never used too much bubble wrap, I guess. But it's uh no, that thing is is hanging on my wall. I still it's one of the best things ever. Thank you guys very much for that. Of course, man. <laughs> it was our pleasure, yeah, dude. It's our pleasure for sure. 
Shannon's oh, like, man. fuck you, wait, you got a cheap trick record and you just sent us these lousy Lost <laughs> Symphony records. <laughs> yeah. But if you watch, if you watch, Shannon, if you watch our interview with David, which you probably won't, but if you do, um, he I'll says that you. one of his buddies comes into his studio and he had recorded his demo on like side story. B of yeah. Cheap Trick's first record. So he put it in, the, he thought he was listening to Cheap Trick, which he thought was his friend. But no, it wasn't his friend. So we decided, hey, why not send him a signed Rick <laughs> and if, fucking yeah, Cheap if Trick If you want to hear the actual story, go listen to the, the episode because Ben just right. butchered the hell it's out of it. It's terrible the way I said it. <laughs> but I'm trying to convey story. it. I'm sorry for butchering it. These guys, how amazing their demo is. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all looking at me like you know i have a hole in my head uh, uh, that's tough. <laughs> 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 they're definitely on side, oh, side he, asked impor- he asked you an important <laughs> question i derailed you what's your opinion on interdimensional uh portals because uh, uh that's an important thing to get to i you know <laughs> oh come on really <laughs> yeah really it's what, yeah it's how, i want to hear about it try to keep me in this dimension um <laughs> good answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> i noticed you got your interdimensional hat on too you got i got tinfoil under mine you got tinfoil under yours <laughs> oh i i i still have hair but i uh <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Thank the interdimensional gods. <laughs> the fucking interdimensional gods look at me, keep my hair in my old age. My Dave's like, <laughs> I've been here a long, long time. Balls are down to my knees. <laughs> I still have my hair. <laughs> He's spit. I did. I totally did. I did. You made me literally spit out loud laughing. Holy shit, dude. You're out of control. Watching your balls race each other off the edge of a chair yet? Yeah, they, they, as they're talking about it. Uh, I love being the only girl in the group. <laughs> you know what I like about you, Siobhan, is you make me feel like the only girl in the world. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. So sorry about that. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> my my Zoom keeps freezing on Shannon just with these huge grins on his face. <laughs> it's not ha- freezing. That's what he looks like. The happy stoner hey, right. smile. That's what <laughs> I, I call that's it. Real time. Well, well, it's very important when you're tripping, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure you have a guy like Shannon. Um, he's the gatekeeper for many uh, because you have to have someone that when you look at them, they have that sp- perma smile on their face because at times you don't know if your wall is going to attack you that if the dust bunny in the corner is going to start eyeing you and decide it wants to come your way in a very vicious and aggressive way so you got to look at a guy like shannon and see that happy life has no matters carpe diem all is fine with that happy stoner big fucking tooth grin that he has all the time because that guy keeps you while you're in the dimension he's like the reason you can get back to the ship you know what i mean he's like to help you out, Benny, next time you're in that space, you just got to remember that that dust mite that's coming at you, he's just joking. He's playing. Don't <laughs> <laughs> hurt you. He's just, he's just playing. <laughs> oh, dust, man. man. I'm so glad that you guys are my friends. Can I just I'm tell you that? Like, so this much. Yeah, I'm learning real. so much. I'm like, this is a totally different world to me, and it's it's fascinating. I feel like I'm learning so much. <laughs> Not just one world. There's many. What are you ex- just many what, what worlds? Are you, what are you extrapolating on? Travel. Well, Siobhan, what are you extrapolating from this yourself? Like as a normal cogent human being of very high. I don't know. I don't I don't know that I would consider myself normal now though. Because like okay. it, this is so interesting. Like I feel like there's a whole area of life that I haven't explored yet. Like like passageways in the brain that can be opened by this, you know. And when I think about the things that you guys are saying, like I think about when I sit down to play music or write music, and like all the limitations I place on myself, you know, and the things that that I limit myself with. And I I think it's interesting that you can. Like open up a part of your brain that allows you to be free. I'll from tell that. you. I'll tell you what and it that's is. That's what I'm taking from. There's this. a word in particular. It's called synesthesia. Do you know what it means? Yeah, like like the 
uh, crossover of uh, Sensory. senses, right? Yeah, so yeah. you smell a sound or hear a taste. That's kind of like the the way you need to think about like how it opens up your mind. It creates sit, like sparks synapses from sides of your mind that would never have talked to each other. And you literally, it's one of those things that if you do it, like, listen, I don't care. All you people will say like, hey, you're a hippie or this or that. Until you do it, it's literally like being a mental virgin as far as I'm concerned. It's mm -hmm. like, and there's plenty of people I know who've taken it like, yo, no, dude, never again. Never. That's a scary place. It's a roller coaster. I don't want to do that. I don't enjoy it. But, but they understand because there's a, an empathy and an understanding that goes along with losing your mind the first time. Because it's really crazy when everything that you've ever known to be true from the shadows in the room to the way light works and hits things just completely go out the door. They go, I call that going Donati. Back to Virgil Donati. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> it was a giant Virgil Donati Australia because we he was in Australia when you know they came and watched him so at the Godsmack show. So uh it all comes back. Virgil Donati's from Australia. Mike uh, Borden. Mike Borden. Yeah, dude. And Australia is the most venomous place. So any place that has a duck billed platypus that can kill you is fucking trippy as fuck anyway. Duck billed platypus. Dude, it's venomous. The female ones, not the male ones. Oh, no, no, it's the male ones, not the female ones are. Maybe it's the female. One of them is venomous. Oh, come on. You can't have facts like that without knowing the, the real deal. No, okay. <laughs> he does that it's all never the time. This before. is not surprising. I, I, know they're, I, I, know, I knew the duck-billed platypuses were, platypi, were fucking <laughs> venomous. I just didn't know that there was a certain male or female that was. And then I was in a guitar group the other day gushing about it. And I made some duck-billed platypus joke for the Australian. And he was like, did you know it was the female or male? Is it the uh, female or male duck-billed platypus that's venomous? Thank you, Google. That's a question I never thought I would hear in my life. <laughs> <Describe it's so laughs> strange. <laughs> 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 up there with what I said about my balls. It's the male that's venomous. <laughs> okay. The male's venomous. Very venomous. He'll kill you, dude. So he's no platter pussy. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <but it's> <laughs> 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 I, I love the content of this show. Yeah, I was gonna say normally yeah, I think it would be scrambling to like get back on track, but I don't even think I want to at this point. Yeah, well, this is all about the other dimensions. We're going right. to other dimensions, and our our listeners just have to go there with us. And what'd they, you say, Dave? Not, what'd you say, David? That, that I, I, when you guys put out the little blurbs on the 2020 show, I want to see one that says "Plata Pussy." <laughs> Absolutely <Okay>. done. <laughs> well, you have to obviously edit that in and then put the fucking clip. No. Thank so you for setting it up, Dave. What's that weird thing you're smoking? Some crack pipe? No, or something? no, dude. This is dabs, and this is like a, a ceramic thing. So I'm smoking weed, but like hardcore weed. So what crack cocaine is to, uh, to, to What's cocaine? The back side of the thing you're holding. <coughs> just a it's light. A, oh no, this is yeah. It has like a little bit of water, and, and it's like just like a, a little bong. Oh. So instead of using like a giant crack torch on a fucking crack bong, <laughs> I could take my crack little ceramic thing and dip it in and then like casually smoke my dabs as opposed to like puffing up my whole studio with giant that's know, awesome blunts. i never saw that before it's called the honey badger honeybadger.com go to it it's fucking awesome those do guys are actually us? really nice do they endorse no, us but they, they they sent me uh they sent me an extra tip one time so uh here's your tip honey badger and you could send me shit i love you guys i love your shit in fact anyone that smokes dabs if you wonder what i'm using all the time and 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 Shannon was wondering. <laughs> this, is a, this is a ceramic tipped. Uh, da I'm sure you could probably use it for crack if that's your thing. Um, and it comes with the, you, you have to buy these strange batteries. They're 6505s or something like that. Like a little bit after Van Halen. And, um, you know, you can put this in the fucking dabs. Don't do it in anything that's going to burn because you'll smoke that too. But like you can get fucking high as fuck. Like much more casually than if you're lighting a blunt, say around your vintage Gibsons. Which has never stopped me, but still. <laughs> so you know, right. Badger. Totally thinking. I bet that's not true. <laughs> I don't dab. I'm a, I smoke all kind of weed, but I don't dab. Wow. I didn't know what a dab was until like two Dude, years ago. If you're sh if, if you're taking shrooms and you take a dab while you're tripping, it will fucking enhance. Like they're best friends, bro. Like it nothing you've ever experienced. It makes me go to sleep.
is what it does. Every no, it's different. This is different, dude. This is 90% active THC versus like 30%. So when you do it, it's like literally like, remember cocaine? <laughs> If you take the cocaine and then you do the bump and it gets you right back to where you were like six hours ago, that's what this does. It just like hits it in. You're like, oh my God, Johnny Depp's floating around with purple This sounds like again. something that pl the cops warned me about in elementary school. I think it was called the D.A.R.E. program, <laughs> like peer pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would come in handy one day. D.A.R.E. <laughs> I only know D.A.R.E. by Stan Bush from the Transformer soundtrack which he did with Vince DiCola, who did the soundtrack to Rocky Three, And that's some fucking awesome music. And what people don't know is he also did the song The Touch, which Mark Wahlberg stole for Boogie Nights, never credited Stan Bush or Vince DiCola, but sang it in the movie as if it were his own. Much like he did Rockstar, which is really based on Judas Priest. Transformers more than meets the eye. Transform which was also Lion, <laughs> Doug Aldrich's first band. Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> Not James uh, Lomenzo and, and, and Vito Brada, but Al Al Doug Aldrich. Shannon, Shannon, we're from, from the same. Robots same. in disguise or robots in disguise? <laughs> I think it's robots in these guys. <laughs> it's kind of dark, dude. It's nice. my moon. You see my hat start rising up. <laughs> I know we haven't lost it yet. I was I was waiting for that. <laughs> I've been managing, managing it quite well. I feel it, I can feel it when it pops past the eyebrows. I bring it back down. <laughs> Did you draw on those eyebrows? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna look like Dave Bagato when I'm fucking eighty years old. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, when you were, when you were in elementary school, do you remember this stuff that they brought around? Because I think we're the same age. Um, that that they made us swish around in our mouth and spit out and they called it swish. God damn it, Dave. No, I don't remember. I wish I did. I've been trying to figure that out because they did it and they, they had us then, then write down if we got dizzy or this or that. And it was some, they said it was for our teeth. It's like a fluoride thing. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what kind of poison it was. Fuck. It was awesome. You probably called James Sokolov, attorney at law. It's probably yeah. had asbestos. It's it made by Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Yo, bro, listen, listen. I found out that like Johnson Johnson, like baby powder, gives you cancer. There's like a fucking multi gajillion dollar fucking suit. So like, it was if fluoride. that gives you, yeah, it was you know, fluoride. But I'm saying, but if it gives you cancer, you don't think that thing they put in your in the, in your mouth in the '80s gave you cancer? Everything in the '80s gave you cancer. Every single thing in the '80s well, gave you cancer. Seventies, bro. <laughs> well, that's also probably why you're tripping as you started getting the cancer from the seventies. <laughs> I'm going to fucking uh, astrally project. No, I'm going to physically walk my ass away from here for a moment. Oh, <laughs> you, do, you do that. Listen, and, Shannon, um, you do you. But I want to say this. Dave. Sir. Can, you know, if... If Benny can give you my number, that'd be awesome. If you, I don't have your number. I've told you 16 times to send it to me through <laughs> fucking message. You never do. Am I not that cool? You won't accept my friend request on Facebook. I, Mikey was like, why don't you send it to him on Facebook? The, the video. I'm like, because he won't accept my friend request or send me his number. So that's why. Your are all sticking out in your neck and shit. I'm upset about it. We, I will, thought we, we, were will, cool. we will make sure you guys get connected yeah, after the show. I promise. I, I will, sir. I will help for sure. No, we'll make it happen, dude. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, we'll make it happen. really nice help. to talk. Thanks for sharing your tools. Enjoy your walk. Can you show everybody in your shirt? Please, Shannon. Okay. Before you leave. I'll sign off with this and and I will talk to you all soon. The apocalypse is going to be out, but ladies and gentlemen, he's wearing a 2020 shirt. <laughs> Woo, rocking it. by Love Shane it. Larkin of Godsmack and the Apocalypse Blues Revival. It's done by Paul Lorenzo, our drummer from Lost Symphony. You can get it at 2020-d.com. It will weird Corey Peza out if you wear them in public around him. <laughs> and in fact, I recommend everybody doing a flash mob with that shirt around Corey somewhere. <laughs> Bye, Shannon. He's gone. <laughs> <But> he's gone. <laughs> he's off in another uh, Dude, dimension he, he, somewhere. Uh, he was hanging on he's, by a he's thread, He's projected bro. to another dimension. Yeah. Oh, uh, I love that guy.
Dude, I didn't really think he was. I, I maybe a part of me thought he would do that, but he really did that. Yeah, yeah he did. you enabled him. So there, that was the invitation. <laughs> That's the interview that people really need to see with Shannon Larkin. <laughs> and that had artwork to his shirt. <laughs> Just <laughs> well, well, David, we do have a few minutes left. Can you just tell us maybe what you're up to, man? Like, how, how are things going with you? It's been a little while. We haven't yeah, had a chance to catch up. There's a lot of angry people that want to hear answers to questions that think we, well, me in particular, talked over you. So can you answer those Pearl Jam questions? <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need to know because people are so angry online because they don't understand our rapport. Like, our dynamic is me to yell over you and then you send me awesome beats that are just completely <laughs> random. And then you just yelled where. over the, the question that he was going to answer, too. Right. That's our <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> the enabler. Um, man, well, w so what am I? What was the question? <laughs> That's what, a, what I don't to, know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been in the studio um, mixing uh, a lot. I've been sending you guys some some tracks here. And yeah, there. they sound great, man. Oh, good. Yeah, I was. Hoping, I, I was love that. Fuck, I bro. love that. That there's a funky one you sent that's got such a cool yeah. groove. Man, that, Yo, am I that, playing keyboards on any of this shit, bro? Because I like I want to. Oh, I've got some original stuff coming up. Yeah, I've got there's a my kit's getting set up on the tenth, and then we're gonna switch gears. But I've got two more songs to mix for Stevie. I've been after Stevie for years to uh, to dig up his old stuff and and let me have a go at it because I just you know there was um, it was kind of a lost in translation. We did a record together, and I had told him you know your voice you, you got a great voice you know you don't have to affect it up so much, blah, blah, blah. And he misinterpreted that as the whole record. So it, the record's really dry. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I've always been bothered that, I, you know, so many like the Vitalogy record, the cassette that I have of the rough mixes eclipses the, the final record and the mastering, you know, it's like, it's so rich and so dynamic. And then in the mastering, it just got squashed too much mm -hmm. in my opinion. But, um, the so so he stepped it up and uh, he's putting out like a, a you know a, not necessarily the greatest hits um if anything i guess like the greatest misses the ones that kind of fell through the cracks and so i'm remixing a lot of those i'm really having a good time revisiting first of all analog tape <laughs> sound and uh, do you have analog tape at your place no these things were tracked on out it's nice to get a, you know a record that's just 23 tracks and a synthy stripe you know, mm. yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> which is I would love awesome. to work on a record with only twenty three tracks. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they could be sub mixes, Corey. They could be sub mixes already that are all yeah. fucked up that you have to EQ all kinds of weird shit out of. That's okay. Parts where there's no vocals, you know, because you only had that one one little space to work with and things yeah. like that. But it's been, it's been a lot of fun, like mixing again, and and there's a I'm using these cables that a good friend of mine started this company with the, this cabling and man, I, I've got to hook you guys up with them, yeah, but sure. I know as soon as, you get a, as soon as you get them, you're not going to be able to use anything but them. Shout I mean, out. I, Who is it? Who, what's the company? I've been doing and everything um, are just drums to mics to hard disk. There's no, nothing in between. And it's because of these cables. Like if I want a different sound of my snare, I switch cables. They're that affected. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the company? Me too. What was it? V2. Um, V2. I think I have some. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take care. I'm going to plug in my head now. I'll plug in some other time. But <laughs> it, uh, yeah, they're, it's incredible. It's changed everything. And like these mixes that, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's amazing. But I've been really enjoying being on that side of the console again, but then uh, on the 12th, I'm going to start beating the shit on my drums again. So nice. yeah. very exciting. Well, you had said something to me about a piano song. And I want you to know that if you send me any piano song, I will be more than happy to obsess over it. As you know, I shall and play on it for you. I already sent you, I sent it to you once, but it fell through the cracks and I will send it again. Yeah. It's, well, it's, the we both know the uh, the apocalypse, and I use that as a uh, uh, definitely a double entendre for our friend Shannon Larkin that has now left us to go officially <laughs> into the other world. Um, between us, is definitely we have a lot of energy, David, but it's so crazy 
that we're a bunch of crazy atoms just smashing off things. And sometimes things stick and sometimes we just bounce in different directions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the, those emails and messages fall through the cracks. It's like whenever I get excited about something and I send, you know, 20 messages of a song to 20 different friends, then all of those messages sort of disappear that were beneath them. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I don't really have the time to roll all the way down. Every once in a while, I'll go back, I'll hit my email thing and I'll go back. I think the last time I did it, I was going back as far as 2003 and I'll just, answer random emails that someone sent me. <laughs> so Pearl Jam fan 96, yeah. like got back, like you've explained what the meaning of corduroy like really was. Like six years later, 10 years yeah. later. Wow. What are you up to now? You know, it's just, <laughs> and I never apologize for the time difference. I right. just, answer. Yeah. just do it. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone sent you their number, you should just call them and still see if it's them. Do that. Yeah, I do that too. it's amazing you just got 2020 (laughs) i have learned that it's a pain in the ass like when i sit and do you know peck out an answer and an email that's all thoughtful and then i edit it you know you got to write a fucking novel somehow all of a sudden you gotta know how to be a writer to get your point across and then i hit and then all of a sudden boom the email demon or whatever the thing it says that their email address doesn't exist anymore oh Oh, god yeah yeah (laughs) Or, or you buy your computer stalls and then it somehow eats your fucking super long email that you haven't saved. And then you have to write the whole thing all over and you're like, dude, I can't handle this right now. 1% left, 1%. Ah. Yeah, I can't handle it. <laughs> the- kind of like Shannon's eyes were telling me like he couldn't handle it at the end. He was just like, this is really, I'm going to, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured when you started talking about the evil dust mites that you might be going down a road that's going to make it. <laughs> yeah, Ben's not very helpful in that situation. <laughs> First off, I just heard, heard the really small Shannon Larkin voice say, evil dust mites? <laughs> <laughs> Did he really say that? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, man. You, I'm terrible. I yeah, you, you broke like rule, you know, like rule one with uh, well, that situation. Some, no, rule one is you <laughs> never have any communication through the internet or phone. Or I would never agree to doing an interview. Like he is such a, a brave soul <laughs> to do to fucking take it at the beginning and fucking be cheersing us as he's like, oh yeah, here's a quarter of this and a quarter of that. Like, dude, that's way too much. That is entirely too much, especially to take in tea, which is a very visceral experience, nonetheless. Could you imagine the feeling when he turned his phone off? <sighs> oh, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. He's just like <sighs> back in his, in his safe room. <laughs> did, yep. did that really happen? Did I just <laughs> talk to the guy from ministry? Uh, that was that was by far the most visual and. Uh, that was a fun episode. The, yeah. The, the, the strangest journey this ep- that any of our episodes have taken. <laughs> <laughs> so back to my first question, Dave. What what's up with the, the the number one Pearl Jam record since we last talked to you? Like, what do you think about that? And do you get paid for that shit, or do they just screw you? Uh, <laughs> well, we were playing, you know, uh, songs off the Ten record, which back in the day, you know, before the, the split happened, I you know, I told them I you know I didn't feel right take because you know I accepted money from the publishing of that because I was promoting it, but uh, after you know leaving the band, I just kind of said that eh, and gave him money back. It was no more of that, you know? Um, but yeah, I, you know, I got a lot of emails and, and it's, you know, it's got a lot of people uh, going to YouTube and, and, you know, talking about how much they loved the band back then and all that stuff. It was a different band, you know, but yeah, I, I really, you know, it, it, um, it probably, you know, got, the, the, I haven't really looked, but imagine the videos on YouTube that of things I've done and all that have a few more hits than they did before, you know? I would say so. Yeah. I would say having a number one record during yeah. COVID. Yeah, and, and people love you, man. On, on our previous podcasts, even like you get the most discussions going, you know, in the comments yeah. and people talking about- how A lot of very, opinions. Very, very passionate, um, specifically about your contributions to, to the, you know, those records. Uh. I love that. I love that. You know, it's like, I, I always see the ones, the ones that always catch my, my eye are the ones, you know, when people talk about, you know, like I, I just communicated with this guy yesterday who, you know, reached out and talked about when he was 12 years old, he went to a, a show and like 
Spokane, Washington, or Bozeman, Montana, or something, some small thing. And, and I'd met him outside, and I gave him and his friend some tickets, and they came to the show, and they didn't have any money or any friends, so they sold one of the tickets, and some guy offered him 50 bucks. So not only did he get to go to the show and meet the band, but he made 50 bucks. And, <laughs> you know, nice. And now, and now he's a drummer and all this stuff. And so I, I saw that on a, U, a YouTube post. And so I found him on Facebook and I, I just wanted to reach out and, you know, see how he was doing, making it through this COVID stuff. And, and he grew up, you know, he got hit by a car and been through all this stuff. It's just amazing. You know, wow. it's like, so the, the I, I, I have a lot of relationships uh, online with people that, yeah, you know, I, I think that's why I, the, 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 the positive thing that I get from the online stuff is just that, that getting to reconnect and, and revisit these memories that, you know, would otherwise just kind of get washed away. You know, it's cool. Love that stuff. Do you think Sharon Osbourne has you playing with black Sabbath that just sits on it? Cause she's, you know, deciding <laughs> to hold out. Man, I, <laughs> I was with Tommy Lee <laughs> and he was doing the methods of mayhem thing. And, um, and it was at Ozfest, and I think Brian Tishy was playing drums for Ozzy, and and it was like, it amazed me, you know, because basically, essentially, it was like, you know, he's in Ozzy's band, but he's never really met Ozzy. <laughs> like once they said to him, like, "Good show," you know, as they were wheeling him off and said, "Good show," and that was it. <laughs> That's wild. I gotta tell you, actually, my mom told me after I went to an Ozfest one year, and I met everybody. And I, I came back out and my mom thought I was depressed because I was so excited to meet Ozzy. And when I came back, she's like, so did you meet Ozzy? I was like, yeah. She's like, you don't seem very excited. And I'm like, well, whatever. And it was because when I met Ozzy, I waited for two days backstage and I talked to every single band like Static X, Slayer. Everyone, some of them, most of them were like, we haven't even seen Ozzy. Like we haven't even seen Ozzy. So one day in a full red jump, like, like jumpsuit, like workout, like onesie. Ozzy like walks out and like he, he like he's covered in sweat and I'm like holy shit and I of course I ran like uh, right over to him with like five other people that had been waiting like fucking vampires and he didn't even look at me he like mumbled he signed a bunch of stuff and I just remember thinking to myself is this really is this what I looked through for the import bin to find like the the concert like for this guy and like it was depressing for me well, you know, sometimes it's it's tough when you when you meet your heroes, isn't it? <laughs> not well, not when they're like you, David. <laughs> You're my favorite hero ever. True. Shannon's a close second, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's 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 moving up very quickly. I I gotta tell you, when we talked to him the first time, the whole time I'm like, man. David would love this guy. <laughs> that was great to get you guys together. It was so fun. Like you know, it does, uh, 2020, bringing folks together. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> it's like you're on a tour bus with your backdrop there, lady. <laughs> Old bus lines, you know? <laughs> I know. We got to get you like a green screen so you can, we can I know. put you in a... <laughs> this, yeah, this is my other spot. So it's like, it might, it's just a studio apartment. So it's like all open. So it's like kitchen and shit and all sorts of stuff in the back. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I'll just throw up the blinders. <laughs> it is like a bus screen. It's so bad. That's my place. I live in a six by six cinder block room. That's it. There's no furniture, just a chair and the light you guys sent me and that album you sent me. The rest of it's all green screen. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> the big sound stage with all the, you know, the, 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 the funny duck, part the duck pond. And is he's on the dark side of Shannon's room right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the curtain of all, like all the crazy trippy curtains and the tapestries he has all over the place. Did you, hear, did you hear about this lady in New York who was remodeling and she knocked out the wall. She was doing something in her bathroom and found out that on the other side of her, of her bathroom. I saw mirror, that. And, <laughs> there's a Wait, whole there's what? a whole other apartment uh on the other side of her bathroom mirror that was like all like abandoned and weird <laughs> that's creepy wow that's uh, a nightmare yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's terrifying was it like, work? it's like a lazy boy there you know facing the mirror but yeah <laughs> creepy <laughs> that would be bad <laughs> so 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 that everyone so that everyone knows so you said you don't give a fuck about like you know 
the Pearl Jam 10 stuff, but you did you did play on, you know, a, a number one record literally just like mere weeks ago. Yeah. Does, is, is that, does anyone call you? Does anyone fire off an email and say, like, yo, man, like good times? No. Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> no, I wish they would, though. I, I you know, uh, Stone is Stone Cold. Thing, though, I actually did play on another number one record this this last year, the Anaba Salas record that I I'm mixing for too. I might have sent you that track as well. Uh, that came out number one as well in Japan. Well, Marty, I'm sure <laughs> Marty Freeman knows about it. Congratulations! I, I remember friend. you sending the track. I didn't realize that it was number one though in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't make fun of that. The, no, no. Where all the smart people are. <laughs> Big in Japan. <laughs> no, Japan. Are you kidding me? They're like light years beyond us. Any <laughs> culture that thinks Marty Friedman's Mister Guitar is like diametrically aligned with my vision of life. There you go. <laughs> the only thing that I've learned about Japan, and this is through Marty Friedman, is that they don't get breakfast foods. They don't understand the hot Cheetos. They don't get Lucky Charms, anything with marshmallows. Well, anything Everything that's else, highly processed. They are vastly and bad superior to us <laughs> in every single way, shape, or form. They're humble, smart, like diverse, cultured people that don't believe in hubris and the. Uh, uh, but they don't understand marshmallows. <laughs> I think that runs through most Asian cultures, actually, not to stereotype anyone, but yeah. <laughs> fuck marshmallows, Asia. <laughs> you got 2020. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where to take that. Uh, I mean, I mean, neither. I don't know. <laughs> my my brain is shutting off. <laughs> How many glasses of wine are you in, Siobhan? How's your week been? But not that many glasses of wine. It's just been a super long day. So my brain is like, what's it, a long day like for you, Siobhan? Um, so I was up at like before 8 a.m. I had four hours of recording and video with this like for soul what? R&B artist with a, it's like a contemporary chamber orchestra in Miami. Wow. And then um, I had another rehearsal with this girl who's like a, like a pop opera crossover singer that orchestrates stuff. She's doing like a big concert on Tuesday. And I'm like her music director for that. And then, uh, yeah. And then I came back here and was just catching up on my class. And yeah, it's it's been a long weekend. So my brain is in like five different places. Did right you get now. me the signed star set record I asked for? I, well, I'm working on it. We have to <laughs> dig into the into the merch archives and get everyone to sign it. Everyone's all over the place. No, I'm just messing with you. No, I'm going to get it to you. I, I don't I'll think get it people to you. understand how much Siobhan works and, how, and even more importantly how much Corey works not yeah. as much as siobhan <laughs> no 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 no, Corey. But I have, i'm just well, more no, like running around much. you just don't get paid as much to work <laughs> as she does that's very different <laughs> <laughs> i i have singular uh things that i work on your your eclectic uh that's true yeah choice, I'm, I'm just choice running of around gigs a lot. makes me tired <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there too you guys did a great interview with shawnee kimmelman i thought uh and, and oh, kudos to yeah. She handled it very well. I mean, you know, for as she's, you know, as she says, she's not incredibly experienced with with the dynamic of, of interviews, and she handled you very well, Benny. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was very she, calm. She was very. She and calm I have had you. a lot of back and forth because she actually inboxed me, much like you, um, and she actually said because of you, because you had sent her a track, and she said that and it was like very, very flattering. She said that a bunch of, I mean, not surprisingly, a bunch of men have inboxed her. Um, because if anyone's seen Sh uh, Shani Kimmelman, who we just did a Slay at Home performance with, uh, with some Skid Row, yep. she's a fantastic, like really yeah, check fantastic. Check that out, and, and her episode is number forty-three for anyone that's listening or watching. Oh, nice. Cirque de Soleil, Michael Jackson. But I met her because she inboxed me and said that um, David had sent her the track "The Garden of Earthly Delights," which is on Chapter Two of Lost Symphony, LostSymphony.com, and that some guys had hit her up about a similar project, doing something orchestral, whatever. And she was just like, "Nah." This the guy after I've heard what David sent me, there's no point in like lowering myself down to this level. And I thought that that was just like what a compliment, especially when you see someone who's as talented. I mean, she's from Israel. She like literally said, "I want to come to the United States and play guitar." Like one out, 
to you know to, she's to California. Got guts. Yeah, she's and a, she she's just awesome. fucking did it, dude. And now she's like getting like uh, I mean, obviously not because of COVID, but was getting pyro uh, training <laughs> and makeup training and fucking playing Michael Jackson every single night, two shows. And she's the real deal, dude. And it's because David sent her a track, and then she's like, "I want to work with you." So we did the Slay at Home performance, and I mean, I hope we do plenty of other stuff with her because she's awesome. So thank you for that, David. And yeah, awesome. brave people, that's what we do. Yeah. And she played with David <laughs> Ellison from Megadeth, who was also on the show and also on Lost Symphony. So, you know, it all comes back around. So when I found out about her, when I went to go look her up, I was like, wait a minute. She's playing with Ellison and Bumblefoot and Andy, who's a great guitar player who plays in David's band. Um, you know, like it, it's fucking ridiculous. So you're starting to see these people. And the reason these people exist um, the way that they do is because the tenacity. Someone like Shani... Yeah. Like, you know, Israelis just by definition have tenacity. Okay. But she, you know, came over here and she's like, I'm going to play guitar. And she's talking to the guy from Pearl Jam. She's, you know, playing with us because she was like, I know that David dude. And she used you as social proof. And you want to know what? The girl wails and she's great. Yeah, and yeah. I appreciate it. It's funny. You're, you're the show. I was watching the show with her. Uh, while I was, you know, working and uh, just watching bits and pieces as I had time. And, uh, a partner of mine in the studio, he says, Hey, I know that girl. And it comes to, I come to find out that, um, he had met her in, they had like a, they shared five minutes, uh, you know, having a cigarette at some mastering engineer's house <laughs> that he was showing the cables to. Wow. Yeah. It's just like, you know, the world's a funny place. It's gotten so small. It's really a trip. <laughs> Well, like, it's great that. that you could have the interconnectedness, you know, like Shannon was saying about the other dimensions. It is kind of like crazy because I remember when you could go to Barnes and Noble and get books like with famous people's addresses in them. And you'd be like, oh, you could send Brian May from Queen at this known address. Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath is this P.O. box number. And this guy is, you know, at AOL is like B.B. King actually on his backstage passes put his AOL address. His actual, uh, so you could go and sign on at one point and you could watch to see when BB King signed on. So, also, you know, you I, know, I, I think it's great. Know, I, it's funny during this, this, this time where everyone's kind of locked down and, and it's like a lot of people have gotten to reach out to each other through social media. And um, like, I just, I ran across um, the great uh, Tony Franklin, bass player, Fred, bass player. Oh, yeah. For the firm blue oh, yeah. Monday. I shot him an email or I shot him a message and just said, yeah, let's do something. And he shot back and said, what you got cooking? And I was like, holy shit. You know, I get all fanned out, you know, it's like, oh man. <laughs> cause I saw him with the firm and he blew my mind, but it's just, it's so cool. Cause now you can, can we explain, can we explain to everybody who's not like learned how important the firm is David? Cause who's in the firm? Can you, can you tell the, the plebeians played on drums, uh, Paul Rogers on vocals and Tony Franklin on bass. You got Unbelievable. It. And who else did Tony Franklin play with? Kaja Gugu, didn't he? One Jimmy Page. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Jimmy Page with, with the firm. Oh, you broke up, bro. You broke up. You got 2020 <laughs> by your internet connection. I'm like, dude, you didn't mention Jimmy Page. That was the guy I was looking for. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> that interdimensional thing happening again. Page has got us on lockdown. <laughs> well, he's working with Coverdale again, apparently. I don't know if that's a good or bad. Is that a good or a bad thing, David? Depends on who the drummer and bass player are. Ba -da -ba. Who should be the drummer and bass player with the Coverdale oh. Page project? Living, obviously. Well, me on drum. If it can't be you. Oh, okay. Then um, Shannon. There Shannon, we go. That would be fucking rad, yeah. dude. <laughs> Okay, and bass? Oh, bass. Carmine Rojas or uh, who else would be out there? Oh, man, there's so many monsters out there these days. So many. This is just so many. I'm going to vote Billy Sheehan. Nah, I'm a little Sheehan. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jocko Pistorius, this zombie apocalypse. Yeah. If you want some more fretless. <laughs> By the way, have you heard him play? Um, uh, it's I think it's called like Boy Alien. It's with um, oh my god, uh, that uh, is it, Ian Hunter. Um, but he does the craziest fucking shit, dude. Um, oh my 
I was just listening to Jocko this week and I, I just refreshed myself. It's like Boy Alien or something like that. And I, it's the craziest bass fucking you've ever heard, Dave. Like you you have yeah. to go. I'm going to look it up right now. You know, Percy Jones, you need to check out yeah. a band called uh, Brand X. With Phil Collins on drums, on bass. Unbelievable. Oh, it's Ian Hunter, Jocko Pistorius, All-American Alien Boy. Wow. Dude, you're you're gonna have your mind blown. You're Ian Hunter. Yep. Yeah. Ian Hunter, Jocko Pastoria's all American Alan Boy, Alien Boy. And it's the most insane groove. Like it's it's wow. honestly the funny part is I, I love the weather report. I listened to the Jocko albums and and I, I think that this may have taken the cake for my favorite Jocko uh oh. stuff. And I just heard it last week. So it was like rediscovering a friend. It was like finding the Freddie Mercury song I hadn't heard. <laughs> cool. kind of like doing Gates to Babylon with you so people know David we talked about Cozy Powell earlier um, yeah. but we decided on lockdown that we'd get our friend Joey Concepcion who's a guitar savant um, as far as I'm concerned um, to do uh, my favorite Blackmore which is Rainbow era Blackmore and of course Ronnie James Dio um, as Mikey Doling who came on the show uh, posted on Facebook today was the goat in metal? I don't disagree. Um, I could obviously see some some contenders in like the Bruce Dickinsons and all that, but I think Ronnie James Dio. So I gotta tell you, doing Gates to Babylon and then hearing your track because you played to the actual Rainbow song, which kind of breathes in and out of 130 BPM. And if you listen to you against Cozy, it's kind of like if you put on a Sonic Maximizer and then a Tube <laughs> Screamer on Cozy <laughs> Powell. It's kind of what you did. And when when, I, when Corey first sent it to me, he was like, "Well, it's not totally in time," and that's true. No, I I but said then, I didn't. I didn't grit it. No, no, right, yeah. right. But by <laughs> not to, but not totally in time. That, I mean, that, literally, that you make it sound like an insult. Insult. <laughs> a little bit. No, no, yeah. no, no. But if you go and listen to it against Cozy Powell, it's like you literally are an Ouija board. Like I, they say this about Joey Concepcion too, like an Ouija board to the disembodied spirit of Cozy. <laughs> <laughs> with with a lot of fucking Adderall. It was funny. <laughs> I just I was playing to that, and um, they threw the uh, a video camera up, and I wasn't really aware of it. And um, then when I watch back, it's always the same thing. I always think I'm I'm playing controlled and and you know not really hitting hard and all this. And then I watch back, and it's just like I'm wobbling again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You posted that video, and you have all these amazing drum gr uh, greats. You know, I, I love a guy like John Tempesta for playing in the Cult and White Zombie. Like, like, oh man, that's so awesome! And I'm just just sitting there like a proud mother, being like, my kid scored a goal in soccer. <laughs> you know, because because if anyone watches this video, like Dave literally looks, I, it looks like Neil Peart, dude. You just have like this very majestic, like you do look very controlled and very thought out. Like where normally I would think maybe you're more frenetic. No, dude, you are controlled. And the way that you play is something that it's, it's an aggression where you can, it's like the same thing. It's like when you punch from here to here in like judo and it's more powerful than punching from here. That's the way you play drums. And that's the way you play cozy. And it's a pleasure to watch you because you do it with such reckless abandon. It was, it's a great track. I was really, really excited when you brought it up. And, and as I've gotten, the versions with little bits and pieces of new people added onto it. It's just got to get more and more excited. And the yeah. last one, I Mike Magnin, who play he plays with Glenn Hughes. Uh, so yeah. he does the whole deep purple thing plays with a real Leslie through a real B three and has a bunch of boxes and all. And he is just such an insane player. And he sent us video of him actually playing. And he's just a great showman. He did a, like, he's the only guy I've seen do like an eight minute, like a uh, keyboard organ solo and not be bored and have to go like smoke a joint or get a <laughs> beer. And he, he's that great. And he got to play on it and he played the organs. I always thought that song needed to make it sound more like purple. It was amazing. Yeah, it's an amazing track. Now, I've got 2% left on my phone that we're talking about. Well, man. David, no, we'll, let you go, yeah. will you come back again? I have a Glenn Hughes story because he and I, he talked to me at one point. We were in, in discussion about uh, me doing this three-piece bombastic band with him. So we'll talk about that next time we talk. Yeah.
Well, oh, yeah, I man. know we'll, that everyone yeah, we'll on the internet that. wants to hear so much more. So, guys, right below, subscribe to 2020-D.com and ask us questions. I know you're annoyed at me. I know you want us to talk about other things in Shannon's trip, but this is our fucking fun, dude. So, fuck <laughs> all of you. You don't have to listen to us. You don't. Dave's here because he but wants to But we'd really appreciate if but you yeah, did. But yeah, but stick around, please. <laughs> David, we, we love, love you, you man. All. Thank you so much. It was so fun to see you. Dave, I love you, man. You really are. David Abruzzese is the true blue. Uh, you you are music, man. Like, you, you are. You're such and, a good and, and, friend, and, too. And being able to... I love that Shannon asked me to give him his number when Shannon hasn't even given me his number himself. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> all right, man. You guys have been 20 20 We'll see you next time. And the first time I talked into a microphone was accepting... The 1993 Band of the Year and Album of the Year AMAs. Wow. By, my, by myself, uncoached by my so called integral manager, by the way. Um, <laughs> just left me hanging. It was horrible, but fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> Were you tripping? <laughs> no, I was stoned out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>